So defining high-risk CLL is critically dependent upon the available options. So let's try to distinguish between chemoimmunotherapy and novel agents. For chemo in, in the chemoimmunotherapy era, patients harboring TP53 aberrations due to either deletions of chromosome 17P or mutations of the TP53 gene, we're doing badly. We're doing really bad. Patients with unmutated immunoglobulin genes had a much inferior outcome compared to those with mutated immunoglobulin genes. So these two groups, TP53 aberrant and immunoglobulin unmutated, constituted what in in, under this particular type of treatment can be considered as high risk. Now, turning to novel agents. Thankfully, things have improved considerably. So nowadays, uh, both BTK inhibitors and the BCL2 inhibitor, in other words, both ibrutinib and calabrutinib on one side and venetoclax on the other side, can lead to much improved outcomes also in this, let's call them adverse prognostic subgroups. So high risk today, again, I will repeat myself, depends on the available options. So if a patient harbors a TP53 aberration, clearly we should not think of chemoimmunotherapy. Now, when it comes to choosing between novel agents, continuous treatment with BTK inhibitors seems to be the preferred option compared to fixed duration treatment based on venetoclax. Regarding immunoglobulin gene strati stratification based on the immunoglobulin gene, if the patients are unmutated, Again, novel agents are the preferred options, no doubt about it. And when the immunoglobulin genes are mutated, will all patients behave indolently? And the answer is no. So you have within this group subgroups that will again benefit clearly from novel agents.